Sunday, October 6, 2024, Prime Minister and Head of Government Joseph John Gute is in Hamburg, Germany at the head of a delegation to rep President of the Republic at the first Hamburg Sustainability Conference, which begins tomorrow, Monday. Good news from a far country, a Chinese medical ship known as Peace Act docks in Douala this week to carry out medical intervention on different pathologies. Over 5,000 have already enrolled for medical attention. Plus, sports, cycling. Algerian cyclist Mui Muni Osama wins the Grand Prix on Gola Cycling Tour in Cameroon hours after the end of the Chantabia International Cycling Tour. Those are our top stories. I am Benen Bumagana. This is the 730 News. The Prime Minister Head of Government, Joseph John Gute, has arrived in Hamburg, Germany, where he is scheduled to represent the President of the Republic at the first Hamburg Sustainability Conference, which opens tomorrow, Monday. Joseph John Gute is leading a delegation made up of the Minister of the Environment and Nature Protection and other close aides of the Prime Minister. Star Building Correspondent Christian Che Atam reports. The Prime Minister Head of Government, Joseph John Gute, arrived in Germany Sunday. Cameroon's ambassador to Germany, Victor Ndoki, led a delegation of embassy staff which received the head of government at the Hamburg International Airport. From the airport, the prime minister's motorcade drove straight to his lodging facility where a group of CPDM supporters and Cameroonians based in Germany was present, waving flags and uttering words of welcome to the prime minister. <laughs> The Prime Minister, Joseph John Gute, is at the head of a Cameroonian delegation which is composed of the Minister of Environment and Nature Protection, Hele Pierre, and other close aides and senior officials of the PM's office. Joseph John Gute is in Germany to represent President Paul Bia at the first Hamburg Sustainability Conference to take place from Monday to Tuesday. The Hamburg Sustainability Conference has been jointly organized by the United Nations, the German Federal Government, the Michael Otto Foundation, and the City of Hamburg. It will bring together heads of state and government, as well as leaders from the private sector, the academia, civil society, and international organizations to develop joint solutions for the socio-ecological transformation of the globe. The first Hamburg Sustainability Conference is the new global platform to speed up the implementation of the SDGs and deliver result-oriented solutions to problems facing the globe today. For two days, the participants will deliberate on ways of accelerating actions aimed at creating a better and a healthier world for everybody. A Chinese medical ship known as Peace Act will dock in Douala in the days ahead. This humanitarian mission, authorized by the President of the Republic, will carry out free medical intervention on some pathologies as from the 7th to the 14th of October this year. Over 5,000 patients have already enrolled in different health domains while awaiting the final selection. Details of that story with Rabiatu Jingi Abdulaziz. These Cameroonians suffering from different diseases are enrolling themselves for medical interventions by Chinese and Cameroonian experts on the humanitarian medicalized Chinese ship known as Peace Arc. Since the 23rd of September, we've been receiving patients from Monday to Friday, just registering them for specialties like gynecological, specialty ophthalmology, dentistry we do general medicine the final selection will be carried out by the chinese experts depending on the gravity of one's pathology the selection procedure concerns everyone it is uh, important for the cameroonian to know that uh, the peace act ship which is uh, supposed to be here on 7th of october uh, will be there for them and uh, the number of people who are enrolled at this time now are supposed to be around 10,000 people. 
This humanitarian Chinese mission has as objective to offer free health care, good and sustainable health. This move will further strengthen ties between China and Cameroon in the cultural, sports and military domains. La Francophonie has welcomed new members, including Ghana. This is one of the takeaways of the 19th summit of La Francophonie, which ended in France Saturday. The leaders of the now 93 states also called for collective action to tackle insecurity, terrorism, and climate change. Charles Ebune reports. Expansionism remains one of the cardinal missions to increase La Francophonie global space. And the 19th summit in France was one short moment with five new members, with Ghana and Cyprus, with no historical ties with the defunct French Empire, becoming members full. A testament for the desired plurilingual and pluricultural character of the organization today, with 93 member states and governments, which also expressed solidarity with Lebanon, and the Democratic Republic of Congo, where violence adversely affects the population currently. At the summit, where President Paul Bia was personally represented by External Relations Minister Mbelambela, leaders also agreed to constantly invest in young people who constitute the majority of La Francophonie populace, especially in technology, to enable their powers to innovate create and undertake in French to blossom to the fullest. The summit in France ended with the adoption of three working documents, including the final declaration which called for inter alia the need for unity amongst the members to collectively tame common but differentiated challenges. The joint session of the Intergovernmental Committee of Senior Officials and Experts of Central Africa begins on the 15th to the 18th of October this year. Focus of that session will be putting in place rapid solutions for research and innovation in a bid to accelerate the diversification of the economy in these sub-regions. Beatrice Losamba has an early report. It will be Yaoundé's turn after Seychelles and Bujumbura to host the joint session of the Intergovernmental Committee of Senior Officials and Experts of Central and East Africa, a session spearheaded by the United Nations Economic Commission and counting harmonized policies and quality national strategies as some of the benefits over time. All the countries of Central Africa now have their national strategies in terms of implementing the FCFTA. We have succeeded today to develop a sub-regional strategy, helping the sub-region to harmonize policies and identify cross-border issues. The session will bring together East and Central Africa's best at a time when Africa is determined and committed to achieving economic growth through diversified economy. Shifting the economy from a single income source towards multiple sources is the agenda for the current decade that runs until 2023. The experts who will flow into Cameroon's capital city from October 15 to 18 will explore sectors like artificial intelligence, which market size increases every day, agriculture, renewable energy and wood. UNECA officials arming members of the press with information some two weeks to the event said it will not just be about diversifying the economy, but also multiplying the trade methods. Innovation and research would be encouraged as the most prominent ways to helping these countries be hubs in their respective regional economies. The Korea International Cooperation Agency, COICA, in partnership with the Chamber of Agriculture, Fisheries, Livestock and Forests of Cameroon, Kapev, has trained over 52 women in the transformation of products such as flour, gari and biochacol. The initiative is part of the activities leading up to the 29th edition of World Royal Women's Day to be celebrated on October 15, 2024. Solange Awasum has details. In Donelang, a village over 20 kilometers from Sa, in the Leke Division, cassava cultivation is a striving activity. Over the course of three days, 52 rural women from Sa underwent intense training facilitated by CAPEF in partnership with the Koika Alumni CAC Association Cameroon. The focus of the training was to teach these women how to repurpose cassava into 140 different products. 
thereby expanding their skills and enabling them to combat poverty. I taught them how to, to produce biological jackal using cassava peelings. As the 29th edition of World Rural Women's Day is celebrated on October 15 approaches, preparations are in full swing on the third by the rain. This year's theme centers on empowering rural women from SA to better navigate the global rise in the cost of living. I'm learning many things. The fabrication of uh, gari, cake, I'm very happy. Participants received certificates upon completion of the training and are now prepared to apply their newfound knowledge to boost economic generation. Rehabilitation works on 13 bridges destroyed by floods in Masok Song Lulu in the Sandaga Maritime Division have been launched by the Minister of Transport, Jean Enes Masenangali Bibehe, elite of the division. The minister, accompanied by local administrative and municipal authorities, visited the site of the first rehabilitated bridge this Sunday and on the spot raised over 28 million CFA francs to support government's efforts to rehabilitate the bridges. Ewane Pole brings back the news. The situation of back roads in the Masoks on Lulu subdivision has been worsened as 18 bridges recently collapsed along the Sombenge Masok road. The bridges were destroyed following heavy rains that caused rivers to overflow their banks. To launch the rehabilitation works of the bridges affected by the catastrophe, the Minister of Transport, Jean Enes Massina Ngalebibehe, elite of Sanaga Maritime Division, accompanied by a host of administrative and municipal authorities were on the site of the first rehabilitated bridge over Rivangoy. Ministry of Public Works gave uh, strong instruction to rebuild those uh, destroyed uh, infrastructure. And uh, that uh, reconstruction will be made in two steps. First step, it will be temporary rehabilitation uh, to make people move. And the second step, step will be the reconstruction, uh, the reconstru totally reconstruction, uh, taking in consideration the parameter of uh, climate change. Adding to government measures taken for the rehabilitation works of the bridges, the elite of the division during the visit raised over 28 million CFA francs. The rehabilitation of uh, this bridge over the Goy River is a welcome relief to the local population of Masok Son Lulu subdivision as uh, traffic has resumed on this road that is uh, linking Sombenge and Masok. Of course, officials of the Ministry of Public Works have uh, promised that after the reconstruction phase, the construction of the 13 bridges affected by the catastrophe will be done next year in the year 2025. Ewane Epole on the Ngoi River in Masok. Benin Bumagana, Studio 4 in Yaoundé, across Cameroon and around the world. This is the 730 News on the CRTV. Over in the Far North region, authorities in the Kuseri subdivision in the Logan and Shari division of the Far North region have been concerting with a number of humanitarian organizations to provide assistance to the victims of the floods in domains like health and shelter. The authorities have been accessing the living conditions of the displaced persons in the area they have been relocated to. Henry Tato Wekambi reports from CRTV Far North. To go by the authorities of Kuseri, over a thousand houses have been afflicted by the flood waters. Madagascar, Gore and other neighborhoods have been affected by the floods. About 1,050 houses have been affected. These authorities have therefore taken immediate steps to relieve the suffering masses. We immediately put our hands together in a working session with humanitarian organizations like the Red Cross and OSHA. These organizations are already providing assistance to flood victims. We have identified about seven relocation sites. 
the different quarter heads have been instructed to sensitize population and we told the inspector of basic education to relocate affected primary schools. Health-wise, we have instructed the district medical officer to deploy health personnel to give out health assistance. The local authorities say they remain mobilized to assist and comfort victims while waiting for more aid from the central services. A new building has been constructed at the Nguakele student residential quarters and has been handed over to the university authorities. It was reconstructed by the military engineering department headed by its director, Colonel Jackson Kamgeng. The renovated building they has the capacity to host more than 50 students. Let's get details from Sandrine Tani. Good lightning constant water supply, good toilets are some of the characteristics of this renewed student lodging apartment of the University of Yaoundé One. A one-year reconstruction project terminates with 32 double rooms, 16 toilets, four laundry rooms, two shared kitchens, and two shared study rooms. A convention signed between the Military Engineering Department and the University of Yaoundé One at the beginning of the academic year comes to foster academic focus by reducing housing worries, promote social connection and camaraderie. The building has modern amenities and facilities to enhance the quality of living for students. The infrastructure beautifully adjusted by the military engineering department will be noted as a contribution to education and community development. With the keys now in the hands of the university authorities, students of the University of Yaoundé One can be assured of a more conducive and comfortable learning environment for the year 2024. We shall get to the end of the report in our subsequent newscast. This time, teachers in the southwest region have been encouraged to continue putting in their best in molding children to become responsible citizens who will contribute to the country's development. The statement was made during the celebration of the 31st edition of the International Teachers Day in the southwest region. The occasion was chaired by the governor of the southwest region, Bena Okalia Bilai. Ngobale Sofia reports. The celebration to commemorate the 31st edition of the International Features Day in the Southwest was an opportunity to congratulate the efforts and success of features despite the challenges faced. We are still there. We will not give up. In as far as education cannot wait, us teachers too, we cannot wait to teach the children. During the event, medals and certificates were awarded to some meritorious educators for their contributions and commitment in the profession. I'm at the rank of commander of Academy Honors. I'm very proud to be a teacher since I'm still there. I'm taking the first level, which is night. I feel happy because it is an honor, it's a recognition of the type of work I have done for the state. The occasion was chaired by the Southwest Governor Bernard Okalia Belai, who entreated the teachers to continue doing their job diligently as they play an indispensable role in the transformation of humanity. Thank you very much, Ngobaleba Sofia. Let's go over to the Northwest, where in the face of the ongoing social political unrest, teachers have called on local authorities to strengthen security measures and ease disciplinary sanctions, which they can contribute to absenteeism. Celebrating Teachers Day in Baminda, many teachers who have often been targets of violence amidst the crisis renewed their commitment to their duties, vowing to make a meaningful impact on students despite the challenging environment. Very Veronica Aji reports. The teachers gathered at the esplanade of the regional delegation of secondary education in Bamenda to celebrate World Teachers Day using the platform to voice their grievances, particularly regarding disciplinary sanctions. We are requesting government to ensure that all the conditions are put in place for us to exercise our duties each free. Despite the challenges they face, including threats to their safety, the teachers pressed for greater support and their resilience was acknowledged by authorities who assured them that their concerns are being addressed. All the troubles of the teachers are known and something is being done about them. So we are very hopeful because we have confidence in the state. When the state says they are doing it, it means they are doing it. 
17 teachers were honored with medals recognizing their dedication and achievements ranging from commander of academic honor to knight of academic honor. The ceremony chaired by the senior divisional officer for Mezam, Simon Emil Mo, concluded with a march past by the teachers followed by a celebratory gathering. Youth associations and officials of the Ministry of Youth Affairs have arrived at several recommendations that will greatly improve the economic conditions of youths in the country. During discussions organized by the Ministry of Youth Affairs, some of the recommendations included identifying good soils for planting and investing in peace promotion initiatives. Yuti Kalili Songo reports. Current trends reveal a burning desire to be innovative and Cameroonian youths have been showcasing their prowess in the technological age. Brilliant minds that comprise of youngsters in the communication, digital economy and ICT domains, as well as their peers involved in environmental protection, biodiversity and sustainable development. Representatives of the youth networks converge upon the Ministry of Youth Affairs and Civic Education for an honest conversation with Minister Mununa Futsu. Our suggestion was empowering young people in mitigating by proposing training sessions for helping young people to mitigate risk management and also identify the various good soils which can be used for cultivation. So we're so happy to propose to sensitize the youth or information which they use or they publish on the, on the internet. Talks the pre yield fruits as consultations with youth networks across the national territory continue in view of revising the national youth policy to efficiently address contemporary needs. Children of the St. Therese Orphanage in Obili they have received gifts of foodstuff and didactic materials from the Kalapataru Indian Corporation to better their well-being. The Indian High Commissioner to Cameroon, Sri Vijay Kan. Kanduja was present at the ceremony which was crowned by the celebration of the 80th birthday of Kalapaturu's founder Mofrat Munu. Let's get details from St. Lila Benyela. Kalpataru, as the organization is called, loosely translates to the one who gives. True to their name, they are providing for the needs of these orphans. It's a very happy occasion and I'm particularly pleased to interact with the children and the management here. They are doing a wonderful job in um, you know, taking care of these children. Melodia singing and an interactive game session to celebrate the 80th birthday of the organization's founder marked the day with pleasant memories for the orphanage. I'm going to learn very well in school and I promise them to be a good child. The books help the children in school to study, to take down their notes, at least they will not be chased away from books. So we we'll say thank you for that. The Indian International Corporation has been at the helm of electricity transmission line business in Cameroon since 2018 under the guardianship of the National Society of Transport and Electricity. This donation activity falls in line with their mission of spreading hope and sharing joy. Let's go to church now. The congregation of Sister Therese of the Child Jesus Parish of Nkongye has celebrated the 20th anniversary of the parish and the inauguration of a presbytery. The event was graced by the presence of the Metropolitan Archbishop of Yaoundé, His Grace Jean Barga. Emanuela Shifuya attended the Mass and now reports. The St. Therese of the Child Jesus Church of Nkongye neighborhood in Yaoundé Filled to the brim by faithfuls who are eager to count their blessings and tell the tales of a journey that spans over 20 years. The church had been existing just the Ewondo community and uh, the Francophone community came later on. In 2012, the Anglophone community was created. From there, we've been having very dynamic parish priests who equally gave us a lot of uh, priority, create a lot of action groups. They have now grown into a cosmopolitan Christian community. Reason, His Grace Jean Barga exercises the patience to say the homily in French, English and Ewondo languages, exalting Christians to live in love. We have inaugurated the new presbytery. I am proud to see this good evolution. 
and I encourage the people to continue because after the presbytery, we intend to build now a very high big church so we can give to this quarter a very good place for prayer. Today's euphoria also marks the feast of their patron saint, the rest of the child Jesus, who is to them a symbol of love and humility. Three new pastors have been installed at the Mesa Mokolo Parish of the Église Evangelique du Cameroon. They include Reverend Salomon Domen, Reverend Nanchuang, and Reverend Verlin Njapa, and were charged with the mission to build Christians and assist in the development of the society. Sandrin Tanyi in the following report. A special Sunday at the Mesa Mokolo Parish of the Église Evangelique du Cameroon, which has its new pastors installed. In the structure of the church and society, these pastors will assist in meeting the spiritual needs of Christians and winning more souls for Christ. They are those invested with spiritual power needed for the task. God helped me to be here for the second time. Too, I am glad. I am in great joy today. I want the God to fill me so that I can help the Christian of this parish to grow in their faith. The sermon directly addressed them. The new set of three were called to give in their best in functions entrusted to them. They have to go for new souls, supervise them for everyone should be able to have a ticket for the kingdom of heaven. We have to help believers continue strengthening their faith, meaning they have to work in collaboration with everyone. They also have to help in the development of the community. Prayerfully, the new recruits in God's vineyard committed to carrying out their godly functions diligently as the church in entrusting this tax on them wants nothing short of spiritual growth for all. Catholic faithful in Yaoundé have been advised to trust in the Holy Virgin Mary's intercession for answered prayers. His Grace Jean Barga, Metropolitan Archbishop of Yaoundé, spoke at a special rosary pilgrimage on Saturday at the Sanctuary Notre Dame du Rosé in Mesam Velo, Hawaii. Juliana Befello completes that story. Catholic faithful from 50 different parishes of Yaoundé came to show their love for Mother Mary in this special rosary pilgrimage. We are very happy because the Metropolitan Archbishop said we are living from this holy ground with lots of blessing. The Metropolitan Archbishop encouraged Christians to pray the Holy Rosary and trust in the intercession of Mother Mary. We intend to confirm our faith in Jesus Christ by the intercession of the Virgin Mary. We discover that she has this capacity to speak to God the Father, to God the Son, and to God the Holy Spirit. The Holy Pilgrimage, which holds once every year in the month of October, has as objective to uplift the faith of Catholic Christians and bring them closer to God. Our Artist of the Week is Kosi. His real name, Njang Mengu Collins. He's a Cameroonian rapper, singer, and songwriter who made his debut in 2014 and author of his hit of the hit song, Dozo Spaghetti. Koso is a graduate in business management and continues to grow on his legacy with over 15 singles and an album. Emma Tawe has more on the artist. <laughs> Cameroon's fastest rapper Kosi's contributions to the Cameroon music industry have earned him numerous accolades like Artist of the Year at Camifest 2021. He stands out for his extraordinary versatility as a rapper and singer. I sometimes I think about what we go through. I want to be in one box, make sure I merge Afrobeat and our, our local sound. The highly acclaimed 237 artist has immense passion for the populace. For me, when I make people happy, when I help people from the streets, those are my biggest achievements. Imprinting his name on the wall of the Afrobeat in Cameroon and beyond has become a reality. And we have a concert, my first ever concert in Cameroon, that will happen in March 2025. Cameroon's multi-hit maker after serving the scintillating credit alert song featuring Pataran King Mont back hit harder, this time with Amen. 
In the meantime, join Kosi and the Cameroon Dance Academy to dance and say Amen. Amen. Let's talk sports with Mimuni Osama Abdella of Algeria, who has won the first Grand Prix Angola International Cycling Tour. He was closely followed by his countryman Yasin Hamza and Helen Wannes of Belgium. 61 bikers participated from kickoff, though 43 abandoned along the line. Romeo Kenny, Tessa Small. <laughs> Algeria is honored as Mumini Usama Abdella is crowned winner of the first edition of the Grand Prix Angola International Cycling Tour. The race vetted by the International Cycling Union had 61 riders from mass start. The bikers embarked on a criterium of 105 kilometers to be covered in 15 rounds. But Mumini Usama Abdella went for the breakaway from the second round. He kept the steam to the end crossing the finish line in grand style. From the beginning, I was really, uh, I was uh, talking with myself and uh, saying, you can do it, today is your day, it's your chance, just uh, do what you need to do and uh, trust in Allah and yourself and just do it. 43 cyclists abandoned due to mechanical fault and tiredness from the just-ended Grand Prix Chantabia International Cycling Tour. Yasin Hamza of Algeria and Helen Wannes of Belgium came second and third, while Cameroon's Clovis Kamzonga Bursul of SNH Velo Club was ninth. The runners-up were 3 minutes 12 seconds behind Mumini. I was talking with my friend. I told them that I will try it from uh, the beginning and uh, they trust me. It was hard today, but I did it. The close circuit race in Yaoundé connecting diverse neighborhoods was in its experimental phase during the past two years. Since then, we come to the end of the 7.30 news. Atta Badinoma is going to be here with the news in French at 8.30. Tomorrow, another week begins. Esther Kimar is here and uh, it's going to be a wonderful time. We wish you the best this week. God bless you.